2015 and we managed to track down the Ted Alspach from Basir Games. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? Uh, great. How are you doing there? Good, good. Very, very busy this morning. Yeah, so just the first morning, so yes. yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, the first question, how did you end up in gaming business? Like in gaming oh, well, I love games all my life. I've um, been playing them for a long time and for the last 10 years we've had this company and we've slowly grown from very, very small expansions and card games to larger games. So I'm um, not sure, I think I heard that it should be an interesting uh, theme though. What was first, uh, game designs or Bezier games? Game designs, definitely. Yeah, I was a little kid, I was designing games and making things, and we were doing all sorts of stuff ever since I was little. So basically made uh, Bizir Games just to publish your games? Um, in some ways. Actually, it was to publish one game called Start Player that I knew no publisher would really want, although ironically, it got picked up by a bunch of publishers um, anyway. But it was a game about who goes first. It was a card game, and you just turn over the card, and then there's criteria like the oldest person goes first or the tallest person or the person with the most holes in their belt or you know things like that. And uh, I published that myself, and then uh, find a funny uh, Z-Man and uh, German publisher and um, an Italian publisher ended up picking it up to publish. Anyway, so eh, who knew? I don't know why I thought it was. I don't. I really don't know. I somehow heard somewhere that Bizier Games was first. I don't know why. No, don't. No, yeah. No, 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 okay. It, it was. Yeah, I, I had published uh, a couple games first from other publishers and then uh, just did that and started doing my own thing. Mostly expansions, very small things. Uh, Ultimate Werewolf was like another first game that was pretty successful, and then we just got bigger, and now we're doing bigger, big giant box games like Hero the Pharaoh. So, uh, which one do you prefer more, or how is it different, game design and publishing, and which one do you like more? Well, game design's more fun. There's less stress. Um, you know, you can come up with anything. It might suck, but it's still fun to do. The process of creating it's fun. Publishing's hard, but it's more rewarding when you see people playing your game. So we have that, you know, 10 tables of people playing our games, which is awesome. I mean, you design a game, you can get like friends and family and, you know, unsuspecting bystanders to play, and that's okay. But when it's people like this and they're enjoying the game, that's awesome. So that's a little more rewarding as a publisher. Yeah, that's definitely. Um, we know that uh, you created the Suburbia, uh, came from your love to SimCity, and they wanted, you wanted to, to create the board game version of it. Tell me a bit about the process, and especially I want to know why it was shelled for two years. Um, well, a couple things. I think initially, when I had worked on it, I loved SimCity, and I wanted to kind of recreate that feel. And it kind of got away from that at some point, became its own thing. But um, originally, the game had square tiles, kind of similar to SimCity. Everything was on a square grid. And there wasn't enough interaction between the tiles. And that's kind of when it went away and came back a few years later. The hexes really is what changed it to make it much more of an engaging game than it was. Okay, and that's, yeah, great. Uh, and I know it well, it had like several renamings, like you changed the names. Can you recall all of them? No. <laughs> I don't remember. Um, ended up, um, we went through a whole bunch of things. Uh, Hanno at Lookout, who is publishing the German version, ended up saying uh, Suburbia was his favorite. And we were like, well, nothing else is Suburbia. That seems to work. And yeah, that's, that's what we went with. Okay. And the question is about the subdivision. I know it's not, uh, actually I was, for a really long time, I was sure that you designed the game, though it's not. Uh, the idea is pretty similar, though it was not as popular. Do you have any ideas why? Um, you know, it's, it's a great game, actually. It's uh, building subdivisions, but it's a totally different type of game. And we thought, well, you know, it's, it's in the same vein where you're building something, so it had a similar name, and so we, you know, we gave it a similar style. But I think a lot of people expected it to be more like Suburbia, which I don't think that would be as good, actually. And so they were probably a little disappointed that it wasn't the same as that. But by its own, it's actually a very compelling game. So. Yeah, yeah, I've heard, that's, that's the one. Actually, I heard that it is a, like a good, solid game. Maybe it was like something small went wrong. It was not as popular. Yeah. Um, the question about uh, Castle of Mangit Klodrik, uh, in one of the diaries, I think in maybe Board Game Geek, I saw that uh, it started in May 2013, though in uh, Counter Magazine, the year was uh, 1983, so I'm a bit confused. How did it start? It was 2013, definitely wasn't in 83. I, in um, 1983, I was playing Dungeons and Dragons and drawing maps, so you could draw it all the way back there to that sort of genesis of creating dungeons on graph paper because that's kind of a lot of where that comes from is being able to draw your own buildings that way. But 
there was never really any game or anything at that point. So it was really 2013. 2013. Okay, we'll do that. Uh, but it was it kind of um, still uh, the Mas Casa Sofanke Clorik was made after the suburbia. So it was. Did you like feel that it's like a next step or something like that? Uh, no, actually, it was totally separate. Um, in fact, I didn't want to do, it was not supposed to be related to suburbia at all, with the exception that where you're laying tiles, which is a similar mechanism. Um, a lot of people compared it, and I think visually, because they see that triangular board with a market, um, although in castles it works totally different. The reason that there's a triangle board in both games is not an aesthetic or a gameplay thing. It's because it fits in the box without having to fold it. Yeah. And that was, um, so uh, Clemens Franz, who did the artwork for suburbia, um, you know, we're trying to figure out how to make something like this without having a folding board. And uh, so he came up with this, you know, the triangle. We're like, oh, perfect. And then as we we're working on castles, we actually had a square board and we had the exact same problem, how to fit those big tiles. And so we're like, well, I want to try a triangle again. We're like, all right, sure. So they look a lot more similar than they play. The same, I heard a lot that if you have one, you don't need another game. Uh, we had, the, I think that's the, the reason we didn't buy the Castle Fun King, King, Mad King Ludwig, because we thought we don't need another one, though they are actually pretty different. Yeah, yeah the games themselves actually play entirely different. Um, you know, as you're saying, they've got that board that looks the same, but in suburbia, the tiles come out one at a time and they get cheaper over time. In Castle of Mad King Ludwig, um, one of the players prices all of them each turn for the other players, and that by itself is a huge difference. It makes the games entirely different just by that. There's a lot of other things too, but that is a core difference between them. Um, I saw this. You have a small game uh, tiebreaker. <laughs> I thought I think it's a really great idea. So, how did people take it, and uh, it, like, is it successful, or how, how was it going? It's like any a lot of small games like that. Some people, I mean, you know, a couple thousand copies. That's it's okay. You know, it was great. It was fine. That's all I expected it to be. It's kind of a, a game accessory more than anything else. Uh, can you tell, is, is there like one particular or few uh, games, your designs that are closer to your heart than others? You know, the thing is, it's always whatever I've been working on the most recently. And so the games I'm working on right now for next year are the ones I'm most excited about. And I can't talk about them, but I'm so excited about them because they're still in development. We've got a lot of great ideas and putting things in and uh, there's one in particular that we play. My wife and I were playtesting. Uh, probably we've been playing it three or four times a night for the last two weeks. We've been just really, really enjoying it and kind of uh, working on it. So, but I can't talk about any more details. So, but it's, it's whatever we're working on. You know, I, I'm very happy with, with the games that are out that we put out. So, so sorry to hear because actually my next question was like, what are you working on right now? No, I decided I don't want to tell tell any details, but maybe you can you know hint something. Just, just. Just intrigue us a bit. Um, it, the, the next big thing, it's not going to be a, a, we have a tile lane game in the works, another tile lane, but the next thing that we probably will be releasing won't be a tile lane game. Okay. That's it. That's it. Okay, fine. Well, thanks a lot for your time. Really, I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I was really looking forward to meeting you. Well, thank you very much. Thanks a lot.